This is a walkthrough for paper one of the further maths papers. We've got our formula page, which is going to come in handy. And we're starting off with this question. Now I'm going to draw a straight line. It's got to go through the point two, one, but I can't do a, a line unless I put at least two points. Okay, and I've got a gradient here of three quarters. What that means is if I had my x and my y, okay, so I've got x of 2, y of 1. Every time I go up 1 here, I got 3 quarters here. So that's 1 and 3 quarters. For 1, it's a quarter. For 0, it would be negative a half, etc. like this. So I just need to plot a few of these points. I don't need to plot all of them. I might choose to do integer ones, which is going to help me out a bit more. Okay, so let's plot this point. I've got six, four there, and I can now use a ruler to join these points up. Okay, and that's my line there. Okay, and that's got my gradient and goes through the correct point, and that's both marks. Question two, I've got a curve. It's going to be a parabola. A is a constant, and it talks about the gradient. If I'm doing gradient, I know I've got to differentiate it. So dy by dx of my curve, if I differentiate y, I'm going to get 2ax plus 3. That's my first mark. And when x is negative 1, my gradient dy by dx is negative 5. So negative 5 equals 2a, negative 1, plus 3. So negative 8 equals negative 2a, a equals 4. So the key thing here is gradient means to differentiate. Number three, this is going to be a parabola. It's going to go through at negative 18. And if that's all you did, just drawing a parabola through negative 18, you get one of the marks. But we also need to label all the points of intersection with the axes. So that means I need to look at where it goes through x. So let's factorise it. x, x, 9 and 2, plus 9, take away 2. And this would be 0 at x equals 2. And x equals negative 9. So that's going to be here, negative 9. And here, 2. So I'm going to have a parabola like that. Okay. And so that's negative 9, 0, 2, 0, and 0, negative 18. And symmetry will be exactly in between here and here. It will be exactly in the middle. Well, exactly between 2 and negative 9. If I add them and divide by 2, I'll get negative 3.5. And it's x equals negative 3.5 at this point here. Okay. Number four. I've got a straight line passing through these points and I must use an algebraic method for this. Okay, so if I think about algebraic method, I could find the equation of the line and then substitute in my points. So let's do that. So it's gonna be y equals mx plus c Let's have a look here. My gradient m is going to be my change in y from 7 to negative 5. I'm taking away 12. And from negative 4 to 10, I'm adding to negative 4 to 6, I'm adding 10. So my gradient is negative 1.2. And if I've got y equals negative 1.2x plus c, if I substitute in one of these points, it doesn't really matter which one, I'm going to choose this one. Negative 5 equals negative 1.2 times 6 plus c. Okay, so negative 5 equals negative 7.2 plus c. c has got to be 2.2. So I've got y equals negative 1.2x plus 2.2. And I'm going to substitute in my points here. y equals negative 1.2 times 8 plus 2.2, 2. 
which is negative 9.6 plus 2.2, which is going to be negative 7.4, okay, uh, which is t. So t equals negative 7.4. Oh, here, negative 7.4. Okay. So I've got to expand and simplify it, and I'm looking at the x squared term and the x term. So let's, if I expand the whole thing first, let's multiply everything by x x cubed minus k x squared minus 5x and multiply everything by 4 plus 4x squared minus 4kx minus 20. I'm only looking at the x squared and the x terms. So the coefficient of the x squared term, which is 4 minus k, and I've got the x term, which is minus 5 minus 4k, and I know that this one is twice as big as that one. So 4 minus k equals minus 10 minus 8k. If I add 8k to both sides, 7k equals negative 14, k equals negative 2. Okay. Number 6. I'm looking at factorising and it's telling me not to expand the brackets. So I'm going to look what I've got in common. Well, this has got, let's write it out, x plus 6, x plus 6, x plus 6, x plus 6. And this one is x plus 6, x plus 6, x plus 6, and 3x plus 4. So they've got a common factor of this, which means I can take that out, x plus 6 cubed, and what I'll be left with is x plus 6 plus 3x plus 4, which is x plus 6 cubed, 4x plus 10, and this has still got a common factor of 2, so this would be two lots of x plus 6 cubed to x plus 5. So the key thing is notice they've both got three of these cubed in common and then you're just going to sort out with what's left. Number seven. Domain. Domain's what I'm allowed to put in. Now remember square roots have got to be more than zero. Okay, you can't square root a negative and get a um, real number, so that means that this has got to be bigger than or equal to 0. If I add 5, 2x is more than or equal to 5, which must mean x is more than or equal to 5 over 2. Okay, f of x equals 1.2, so 1.2 equals the square root of 2x minus 5. Square both sides, square, of, square 12 is 1.144, so 1.44 equals 2x minus 5, add 5 to both sides, 6.44 equals 2x, and half it, 3.22. And now x equals 2 and 5 eighths, let's make that into improper, that's going to be 16, 21 eighths. So I've got the square root of 2 lots of 21 over 8, minus 5, okay, which is square root of 21 over 4 minus 20 over 4, which is the square root of a quarter, which is a half. Well, plus and minus a half, but it allows a half. Okay. Quadratic sequence. Let's have a look at this. So, first term, second term, third term, fourth term, 10, 33, 64, 103, plus 
Okay, so I'm adding 8 as my second difference, which means if I take away 8 from 23, it's 15, so that's got to be minus 5. So I know of my a n squared plus b n plus c, a is half of this, 4n squared plus b n, and c is this, negative 5. Okay, so let's choose this now to substitute in. So I'll have 10 equals 4 plus b minus 5. So I've got 10 plus 5 minus 4 equals b. b equals 11. So 4n squared plus 11n minus 5. Okay, I've got a rectangle. Area is if I find the product, 2x minus 3, x plus 1, 2x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 3, which is 2x squared minus x minus 3. It's got to be greater than 7, so 2x squared minus x minus 3 is greater than 7. So 2x squared minus x minus 10 is more than 0. Well, let's pretend it equals 0 and then come back to it. Let's factorise it. 2x x. What's going to get me there? Uh, 2 and 5. If you take away 5x's and add 4x's. OK, so you'd have x is negative 2 and x is 2.5, but now you've got to realise that multiplied, they're going to be more than zero. So if I imagine my graph here, I've got minus 2 point, I'm sorry, sorry, I've got minus 2 and 2.5, and I want it to be more than zero, so I want this bit and that bit. So x is either more than 2.5 or less than negative 2. Well, it's a shape. It can't be less than negative 2. It can't have those sides. So x has got to be more than 2.5. OK. So the key thing there is to make it equal to 0, factorise and solve it. OK. This one I don't think you guys had much idea about. And this is all linked to um, circle equations. So first of all, the radius, you need to square root these. So the radius here is 6, and here is 8. And this tells you the x-coordinate of the centre. So here, that's going to be 3, and here, that's going to be h. OK, now we know the radius there is 6, and that radius is 8. And if we use Pythagoras, 6 squared plus 8 squared is 100. So this is going to be 10. So h will be 13, which is what we have to work out. So that's easy enough. 13. So using a bit of information that we know, using properties of a circle and where the radiuses are. Okay, number 11. We're looking at adding fractions. To add fractions, the denominators must be the same. I can make this denominator the same as this. If I multiply, so x over x minus 3 times x minus 5 times x minus 5, suggest brackets, plus 6 over x minus 3, x minus 5. So you'll have x squared minus 5x plus 6 all over x minus 3 x minus 5, and let's see if I can factorise this, x minus 3, x minus 5, two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative, so they're both negative, okay, and we can simplify that, so x take away 2, x take away 5. Remember, Rules of fractions, you may only multiply or divide, you can't just randomly add or subtract things from the bottom. Okay, number 12. 
I'll come back to number 12. Let's go on to number 13. Okay. X to negative quarter, 0 0.2, which is 2 tenths or a fifth. Okay. So 1 over X to the quarter equals 1 fifth. So X, the fourth root of X equals 5 x equals 5 to the power of 4, 5 times 5, 25, times 5, 1, 2, 5, times 5, 6, 2, 5. Don't forget about these reciprocals, that a decimal can also be written as a fraction. Number 14, let's see what we've got. AD is 2 root 3, that's given to us, and we want CD, so we want this length here. Okay, now we've got a number of different bits of information. We've got a large triangle here, and this is 2 root 3, and this is 30 degrees, and this is a right angle. Okay, now we can use a number of different things. This length here is going to help us out. And so we are going to use cos because we've got the adjacent, no, sorry, we've got the hypotenuse and the adjacent. And we know cos of 30 equals the adjacent over 2 root 3. Cos of 30, we should know, is root 3 over 2. So root 3 over 2 equals a divided by 2 root 3 times both sides by 2 root 3. So I've got root 3 over 2 times 2 root 3 equals my adjacent, which is 3. So my length BD is 3. Okay? That's 3 centimetres. Now that's 45 and that's 45. And I can actually work out my perpendicular length here as well using sine, sine 30 equals opposite over hypotenuse, so a half equals opposite over 2 root 3 times both sides by 2, so the opposite is root 3, root 3. Okay, so I can now, because this is an isosceles triangle, because they're both 45, that's also root 3, which means my length x is 3, take away the square root of 3. So it's really important for this that you know your exact trig values. If you don't, you don't really have a chance of being able to do this. Okay, 15. This will be completely new for you. It's worth four marks. It's a lot of marks. You've got three stationary points, which means it's going to stop three points okay it's got a minimum point like this a point of inflection means it changes and a maximum point like this okay so we're in a minimum point where a and b are less than zero both so it's going to be in this quadrant okay they're both less than zero a point of inflection at zero three oh that would be three zero zero three is there so that's my point of inflection and a maximum point somewhere here. So it's minimum point, point of inflection, maximum point, and it cuts the x-axis at three distinct points. So you can have your minimum, your point of inflection, your maximum. It's gonna look something like that. Oh, and I should label my points. That's P, Q, and R. A, B, 0, 3, C, D. Okay. So we're going to use our sine rule. Sine Y. 6 over sine y, oh, start again, 
6 over sine x is the same as y over sine 120. Let's replace what we know. 6 over 1 over root 12 is the same as y over sine 120. Using my sine graph, that's 180. 120 will be there. And that's the same as 60, because they're both 60 away from the edge. So that's the same as sine 60, which is root 3 over 2. So root 3 over 2. Right, 6 divided by 1 over root 12 is the same as 6 times root 12. So I've got 6 root 12 times by root 3 over 2 equals y. That cancels down. So I've got 3 times root 12 times root 3. Root 12 is 2 root 3. 3 times 2 root 3 times root 3, which is 6 times 3, which is 18 centimetres. This is probably going to be the most confusing bit for you at this stage. Factorise, you did this well. Two brackets, 2x and x. Uh, you can have two numbers that multiply to give 5, so it's got to be 1 and 5. Uh, so you're going to need 1, 2 and 5 ones. 2x plus 5, x plus 1. And I should notice that they've replaced x with sine theta here. So you get one mark just for writing 2 sine theta plus 5, sine theta plus 1 equals 0. So sine theta equals minus 2.5 or sine theta equals minus 1. Now from the sine graph, it never actually goes, it's always between 1 and minus 1, so it's, this is not possible. So you've just got sine theta is negative 1. So you've got to find the inverse sine of negative 1, which means at what point is it negative 1? That's 180. That's 360. Exactly in the middle, 270. You need to be really familiar with the sine and cosine graphs. OK. We've got a third here. Let's sort this out first. This is square root of 100 times square root of 3, which is 10 root 3. So we've got 24 minus 10 root 3 over 4 root 3 minus 5. I need to rationalise this. 4 root 3 plus 5, 4 root 3 plus 5. Whenever you've got an irrational denominator, you're going to need to rationalise it. OK, so I've got 24 minus 10 root 3, 4 root 3 plus 5, all over 16 times 3 minus 25. So that's 48 minus 25. And this is 96 root 3 minus 50 root 3. plus 120 minus 40 times 3. Oh, those two are going to cancel, that's convenient. So I've got 46 root 3 all over 23, which is just 2 root 3, as required. Brilliant. So that's the paper in 24 minutes, except question 12, which we're now going to look at. OK, so let's look at this matrix, a 90 degrees clockwise rotation about the origin. So if we've got our two points here and here, 90 degrees clockwise, clockwise is that way. So this point, so it's our previous matrix was 1001. Zero, zero, one. OK, that's 1001. Zero, zero, one. So we go 90 degrees, this point here, 10. It's going to go 
here, which is 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1, and this point 0, 1 is going to end up there, 1, 0. Okay, m squared would be m and then m again, so that would be 90 degrees again, 90 degrees and 90 degrees again. So it's going to be 180 degrees rotation about the origin. Okay, so what's going to happen now is that this point is going to be ending up there. So that's zero, negative one there. And this point will end up here, which is negative one, zero. Okay, and hopefully the other little extra video helped with that. So that's less than 30 minutes for that paper.